Is that what this is? Okay, so Trent, this is my pantograph. This is what I built. I built it out of bicycle parts and just whatever I had on hand. I actually used a caster wheel to make my pivot and I just welded in a piece of square tubing and cut out the sides and drilled a hole through here Amazing. to put my piece in. So the idea behind it, and right now I've got this uh, this magnet here, magnetic square for welding. I've got it there as a counterbalance to keep it from pivoting too much. And then I've got a I've got a counterbalance there to hold it. Wow. And what it does is it uh, it pivots multiple directions, so these go back and forth, and it pivots around the center of that. Uh, rod, and then the distance from the pivot point here to the pivot point at the end determines the distance from the pivot point at the end, no, in just here, up oh. Oh. right here. This okay. is the pivot point. Okay. You got a little X right here. Gotcha. So this pivot point is where it pivots around and it pivots up and down. Yeah. And from this point, you measure out to, to this one. And that gives you your total distance, because this one stays at the end. And then depending on the scale that you want, like right here, I'm doing an enlargement of this little piece up um, 2.6 times. Because okay. I calculated the height of that to the height that I wanted it to be, and it worked out to be 2.59, so I went 2.6, because oh. I don't mind it being a little bit bigger. And do you have a kind of, kind of a scale that you... Well, what you do is you take you take the distance from here to this pivot point, and you divide it by 2.6, and that gives you your distance from here to here. The same thing from this pivot point to the end of your pointer. Divide it by 2.6, or you, or whatever ratio you're going to, and that becomes this from this pivot point and you just out to here. Have it. Oh, I'm screwed. I'm holding it there. Yeah. Yeah, these are, these are on thumb screws. These both slide, but I found that I really don't need this one to move. I just need this one to move. Yeah. So this is a static position. I could have just made it one permanent piece. And so your and rod this here, is, you can And then this one this. also has a little screw here that I can... I'll march that. I'll flip that over. This also has a, a pivot point. I can adjust this, and you just make sure that... These are square to this when you're putting this distance together and tightening it down. Mm -hmm. Just make sure they're at a 90 degree angle. And when you do that, then you reach the point where you're touching the edge of the, edge of the piece here. I'm right on the edge, and it points right to this edge. Now this could have been down a little bit lower, or this one, this table up a little bit higher. And, and that's... That's what gives us our third dimension in this. These are anchored on a turntable system where I just use two bicycle, I just use two bicycle uh, back wheels with their sprockets, and then one wheel where we're filming, and then one uh, wheel in the middle is a tensioner, and that the middle wheel adjusts, and these. These two adjust back and forth. The distance between the pivot point and the center point of this axle is the same distance from that end to that and, and correspondingly for the other one. So I can adjust these for scale also wow. so that they can fit. And then you just spin it around and my, touch point to point to point to point. Speaking of spinning, my head is kind of swinging from all the calculations that I, <laughs> kind of <laughs> that I see went into this. It just is incredible to see all that all in one gadget. Yeah, it's Amazing. it's pretty fun. I spent probably two or three weeks trying to figure it out, and nobody has plans. <laughs> I look, I scoured the internet, and nobody has plans. 
and then I uh, talked to the guy uh, at Sculptor's Apprentice on YouTube. I, I emailed that guy, and he emailed me back, but I didn't know it because my wife got to the email first and didn't mark it as unread. <laughs> so, yeah, 16 days later, she's like, I, I'm telling her, wow, I've written to these people and nobody's called back. She's like, well, except for that one guy. And I'm like, what one guy? And amazingly enough, I, I built this by then, but I, I couldn't get it to line up right. And he sent a whole bunch of information, and one page told you how to set the thing up oh. once you were done. <laughs> once you had one. And that one page made it all come together. Because then I knew, okay, set this at the end, then divide it, then do that. And... Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I can see how it very, it'd be very difficult without those special secrets. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was very difficult. The hardest parts were figuring out how I was going to use what I had in order to make it work. But the bike system worked really well. I just used the whole wheel and cut a hole out of a piece of plywood. Mm. And and you can see the lines on the plywood here. This is how I centered the the wheels on there. And I actually oh, yeah. the Hold the sprockets, <laughs> because there there's an even number of sprockets on this bike, uh -huh. the sprockets lined up with my cross pieces and my other pieces. So it actually centered the whole piece in there. Oh okay, so the little rivet. Yeah, the little there. little rivet on the end of the sprocket. Huh. Or the Whatever they're called. Okay, and this so, is just to keep these. Are you going to? Yeah, this one is just to keep the chain tight because if you don't have the chain tight, then it slips off the gears and everything. It, it, it's, it's not running vertically like on a bike, so there's nothing there to keep it on except for the tension. Makes sense. Because gravity is not going to hold it right onto the sprockets. Yeah, makes sense. Huh. But it turned out really cool. I know exactly how I would build another one now, and I'll probably do it, and I'll film that whole process, but eventually I'm going to, probably, after, after I get this sculpture done, I'm going to take this apart and show each and every piece, Yeah. And, and I might even draw up some diagrams for future reference, because nobody has it. Yeah. Nobody's drawn diagrams. All I had to work from, even, even, uh, even Stephen, the guy from uh, Sculptor's Apprentice, just sent me pictures and some basic calculations of how the thing should go, and there was no explanation of how to put it together. And he, he offered to, to share stuff, but I'd already built it by that point. And so his information came in very useful uh, for setting it up once I'd already had it built. So there's a lot of information out there, but you finally... There, actually, there wasn't a lot of information. Oh, really? There were no. just pictures of old machines. Oh, wow. And, and I had to look carefully. You can ask my wife. I mean, I spent hours looking at pictures, trying to glean trying to the tidbits of information on how how to get them to, to pivot properly and, and, and the fact that I needed this extra bar on here and how to, how to insert the, the pieces. And there was a lot of information... It just wasn't all together, and very rarely could I find more than one piece in any one place. Mm. So it made it a little, a little more difficult. Wow. So now everybody can go to you for the full experience, <laughs> the pantographic experience. Well, the thing is, I, I winged it. I, I didn't really measure a lot of stuff other than the setup, because it didn't need to be. All I had to make sure of was that things were centered, and, and the, only, the only thing I'm not real thrilled about is this piece right here because it wobbles. It oops, sorry. It wobbles on the on the thing here. Not not with it as it is now. It's actually holding pretty pretty nicely. But there's some give in the bearings that I used on this caster wheel. And I would I would probably if I were going to do it again, I'd probably use the front um, assembly from a bicycle. Oh take the wheel apart and use the bearing rod. Yeah, just use the bearing rod and the center piece and weld it into a, a piece and do it that way. And this, it this part nice here is firm. pivoting just on this all thread? Yeah, yeah. Actually, this is... it's it, The all thread is only only up to about here. Oh. And then I've got a, a small section of thinner pipe inside of this half-inch conduit. Oh. The half-inch conduit goes all the way through. The, the short section of pipe goes about this long, and it was just so that at this pivot point, 
all the weight wasn't going to cause it to break. Because I know I'm, eventually I'm going to have a weight here and not be using this line. I'll have the counterweight on the machine itself so I can set it up anywhere and not have to worry about hanging my weights and stuff. Right, right now, I just needed it to work so I can get this piece done. But the square rod actually allowed me to center my, my drill holes and everything for these a lot easier. It, it made it a lot easier to center these. I didn't have to worry right, about trying to line up a line up a pipe and drill it straight. Sense. I didn't have the setup for that, so the square rod just sits on it perfectly huh. and and spins around nicely. Well, I've got to get some footage of that in just action. Enough. Had just enough in there, so yeah, it's it's pretty fun. Whoa. Yeah, cool, buddy. So that's that. Yeah. And then the way I work it is I have it, and I, I usually am just holding this end, and I touch a point, like I'm going to the elbow here. So I'll go to the elbow, or better yet, I've already got the shoulder touched up here. So I'll come touch the shoulder, and I set it on the clay, and I can... I can know right where the clay is. Where, and I can move it down. There's that point, that point. And I can check all of my points. I can also lift it up. Top of the head here. Notice that I'm needing to add a little bit. This is the best thing that's done. But we can compare. Sometimes I'll be working on this and I'll go, why isn't it moving closer? Oh, yeah. Tap, tap, tap. But the only thing I've got to be careful with is because that's a hydrocolor, I mean, it's, it's, that one's filming too. <laughs> um, the hydrocal casting that I've got over there will chip and scratch. And these are steel rods. So I do have to be careful not to just go slamming it into it. So this will probably be scratched up a little bit by the time you're done. Yeah, way. but I can I can always I can always patch it up. Yeah. It's not a big deal for that. So there's the back shoulder. There's this. Wow. Master sculptor and inventor. So, Extraordinary. There we go. Very cool. That's so cool. And it looks all hideous right here, but I'm just getting the bulk up of the... You know, I actually love this stage. One. Yes. You can see the nails that I put in for, for marking different things. Like, I've got it here. Ben, you shouldn't be on that one friend right here. Seriously. Okay. Well, sure hop off. So what do you think of that? Yeah, my problem was uh, I don't that's have any reinforcement really cool. here, so as I've been working. It's just such uh, simple technology, but shit. also so complex. It's like, yeah, I understand it's simple, but I don't know how to do it. Look at all the stuff you had to do to build it. Uh-huh. Yeah. I bet it's nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It really made a difference. Yeah. Just, I mean, who doesn't want to, like, Around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there has been times he's got this so hot that this kind of glow right. red big time. Yeah. And the top is that's why this you see the white car on the front now. Uh-huh. Yep. So that's yep. awesome. This is that's clay, modeling clay. <laughs> 